Welcome to Anna Mollican Art. I'm Anna Mollican, a contemporary New Zealand artist. Today I'm interviewing Nanette Kruger of Nanette Kruger Metal Art. She's not only an amazing metal embossing artist, but she's also has a metal embossing academy. In this interview, you can learn about Nanette Kruger's metal embossing academy, some of her metal embossing techniques. She shares valuable information about embossing for beginners what sort of metals there are and where you can get them from and also about the tools. And she also shares where you can find some great metal art embossing tutorials. Now, Ned is a metal embossing artist and instructor and she's based in Tauranga in New Zealand and her work is absolutely outstanding. Her craftsmanship and detail is just mind-blowing. And so I really wanted to bring her onto the channel and just really talk to her about her beautiful art. I didn't really know about this art form until you reached out to me. So what is metal embossing art or pewter art? And like, what's a little bit of its art history? Not a lot of people know about metal embossing in New Zealand. It's quite new here. So I remember my parental grandmother doing pewter art sort of in the 50s and 60s. It was a massive hit. So I was only <laughs> born in the 70s. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> I remember just seeing the beautiful, beautiful things that she made with it. And she, she added lots of detail and textures. I never saw her actually physically making it. We only saw the end result. Wow. Um, she was massively creative. By the time I wanted to learn how to do pewter, it sort of died down. In South Africa, it went out of fashion. Mm. And so I really struggled finding resources on it. Then right about 2004, I stumbled upon a book by a South African pewter artist, Sandy Griffith. So she made a few tutorials. I bought the book, got some supplies and just went crazy. My first projects were absolutely horrible, <laughs> like really horrible. But I'm so glad I stuck to it and experimenting. So this is basically what it looks like. So it's a thin sheet. This one's aluminium, so you can hear it's, it makes a little bit of a noise and it's quite stiff. So if I, it doesn't really flex when I bend it. So the other one, this one is pewter. So they look quite similar from mm -hmm. afar, but the pewter is much softer and um, more luxurious. Mm -hmm. So it's also, it scratches easier. It's a bit more tricky to work with. It's softer, but yeah, you can get a lot more height, a lot more depth with your pewter. So what you do is you use some of these hand tools. So this is a Teflon tip stylus tool. The most common ones to use, the most readily available ones are these um, ball tip tools. Oh, so wow. you can see they've got different size tips. So they're double sided. And so that's basically what you use to, to work out your design on metals. The tricky thing is just when you're starting out is you constantly work back to front, back to front. So in order to raise the levels up, you have to work it from the back on a soft surface to create that, the depth. Wow. So it's a bit tricky in the beginning just to sort of know, okay, you know, which side do I need to turn it? But then mm. it becomes second nature. So embossing is basically working out a design on a thin sheet of metal and to raise those levels up to give it depth and dimension. Basically what happens is you transfer a flat design onto your metal. Okay, so in doing that, it's, it's literally as easy as you stick it onto your metal and you trace over the lines with a pen and that um, transfers your design. And so then what you do, is this is just a little sample block. This technique, this one here, is called low relief. So it's just this one line that is raised. Oh, yes. And this one is called high relief. So that's where you start pushing the whole thing up. And because you, you lift it quite high, you have to support the back by filling it with wax. So I normally just use normal beeswax. So it sets very quickly. It's it doesn't melt in high temperatures. This one here, the background texture, that's what we call engraving. You can see how the design is really starting to come to life by combining the different techniques. This one here is done from the front, so engraving. And so it just gives you a really good idea of the different techniques and how you can translate them. It's quite a simple craft form. It's not very difficult to do. 
The trickiest part is just to know your techniques to know which is low relief, high relief and engraving. And then to keep your head straight in the beginning when you flip them back to front, back to front and to keep defining the lines every time you flip them. That is amazing. You sent through some beautiful photographs and I noticed that some had, so maybe aluminium mm -hmm. combined with copper. Do you yeah. literally combine different metals together to create So what you can do, because the metal is quite thin, you can use a cutting tool. It's a, it's a needle tip tool. You can use a craft knife as well. So because the metal is quite thin, you can cut the shape out as soon as you've filled it with wax, when the designer supports it, let's say with that heart, the picture that I've sent you, that's silver at the bottom and then the copper on top. I just literally engraved the bottom part, so the silver part, and then cut out the copper design. I've cut out certain parts of it and just stuck it on top of the other one. Wow. So it creates that multicolored look, which is really cool. That is beautiful. That's so, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing all that with us. It's like so neat to learn your process and the way, well, you know, to sort of delve a little bit into your process. I'm sure there's so much more. And so looking yeah. at the metal, is it actually like an aluminium can, like say a can of Coke? Is it sort of that sort of metal? This one is probably a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. So you get them in different gauges, which is different thicknesses. In the States and in Europe, which is where I get most of my metal from, they basically call it a gauge level. So anything between a 36 and a 38 gauge is nice to emboss by hand. So it's not too mm -hmm. stiff, it's not so mm -hmm. hard. You can emboss copper as well, but co copper is quite stiff because the gauge level is lower. So the higher the gauge, the thinner the metal. So wonderful. And so what inspires your art? I find beauty in the simplest things. I don't know if there's a single thing that inspires me. I can be inspired by reading something or looking at a picture and just thinking, oh, that'll look amazing in metal. So it's many different things. For me, filling my creative well and looking up to my creativity really happens when I'm quiet and when I can get out in nature. So nature is a massive inspiration for me and just that sense of feeling calm and being surrounded by something beautiful, the trickle of a water stream or a, a waterfall or the, the sound of the ocean, just looking at things from a different perspective, really noticing what's around you. So not just seeing things for what they are, but really starting to look into the finer details. For us as a family, I, I frustrate my husband and my son endlessly when we go on nature walks because I get sidetracked. I'll stop and take pictures of the mushrooms or beautiful leaves or the bark on the trees. And they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I, I notice the finer details and the textures. So you know what? I do the same and I frustrate my family too. You do? Back, can I take all the pictures of the bark and all of that on the walks? Oh my gosh, nature is just amazing, right? So you think, yeah. It's incredibly inspiring and just yeah. peaceful. Hey, just the sense of calm and connectedness that you feel when you're out and about in a beautiful setting, it's, it's wonderful. Definitely the fresh air, everything. So what is your preferred medium to work in and why? Oh, my favorite by far is pewter. It's very expensive and it's really a struggle getting it in New Zealand. Importing it is next level expensive because of the import costs and it weighs a ton. It's really, it's a heavy metal. And the other thing that makes it tricky is pewter contains a bit of lead. So there's all sorts of hoops you have to jump through to import. And then the other thing that's a battle is the pewter in order to get just the depth of the, and the entrance. So you apply a chemical liquid called patina, which darkens the metal completely. So when you look at the, the pewter, when you buy it, it's completely silver and shiny. Mm. And then the moment you apply this chemical liquid over it, it turns it black and wow. it sort of goes matte. So then in order to remove that, you use metal polish to polish it up to a beautiful shine. But then mm. the patina lies in all the grooves and all the textures and the details. So it really makes your design pop. But because it's a chemical liquid, it's tricky again to import it. Yeah. So that's why I started just using aluminium, especially for my classes, mm. because it's way more affordable. So with the pewter as well, you have to work with gloves to protect your hands. And you have to work in a well-ventilated area when you apply the patina and the metal polish. So you sort of eliminate those processes when you work with aluminium. Mm -hmm. So number one, it's affordable. So I always advise, especially beginner students, just play around on that so that you don't waste something really expensive when you make a mistake. You feel, oh, I paid so much money for it and now it's, you know, it's not what I wanted. 
And then also on the aluminium, you use just normal black craft paint to get the same effect as the patina does on pewter. Wow. So pewter is, I've got a love-hate relationship with it in the fact it's my favorite metal by far, but gosh, it's such a struggle to import. <laughs> mm, definitely. And, and so we've touched on that it's really hard to get metal supplies in New Zealand. I'm still struggling to find supplies in New Zealand. I import most of my supplies from the US now, from Amazon. So I've got a whole page on my website where I share the specific links to the products that I use and tried and tested and I know it comes here, it's perfectly packaged, the metal isn't damaged, the tools and everything arrive as you want them to arrive. I'll share the link to the shop as well. The shop is built out of affiliate links that goes back to Amazon and you can get pewter. It's not a massive amount. It might be half a meter by 30 centimeters wide. So if you just want to get started and see what the metal feels like and all that things, then that link should be fine. It also goes to rolls of the aluminium, the tools, the paint, everything. So everything you could possibly need for it is on my shop. So, um, but just know that I don't supply it. It comes from, it comes from Amazon. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I will definitely put the details below because that's going to be handy for anyone in New Zealand, but also around the world. In terms of your tools, is that the same as well? Links to the tools basically will take you to some of these. Most of the local craft stores and our supply stores sell the ball tip tools because they use them for all sorts of other different things like ceramics and even nail art. And then the paper pencils you can find from the dollar stores. So I've bought sets of these and I think there's five or six different pencils for about two to three dollars. So those you can find. The, the thing that you'll have to probably import is the aluminium sheet to work on but then most of the other things will be readily available it's just the metal that's really hard to find in New Zealand especially the other things you'll need is a hard smooth working surface mm -hmm. so that could either be a cutting board like those craft mats or it can be a sheet of glass with no texture on it because the slightest bit of texture transfers to your metal but that you can get from Kmart I mean you can just go and buy a glass board or even a, a placemat or whatever like that and then some craft sheets or felt so that's what I use as a soft surface a pair of craft scissors or a craft knife to cut the metal with and then black craft paint is available from anywhere so how much would you say it would cost them to instead of invest to get start up it's a basic get started. Mm -hmm. I sell basic starter kits, which is a half a meter of aluminium. So it's a half a meter long and it's 30 centimeters wide with a set of ball tip tools and a set of paper pencils. So that I sell for $25. So I can ship that throughout New Zealand. I'd say you can get started for way under $100. That is so reasonable. The things cost so much. To yeah. Start up is really accessible, I think. Yeah. It's way more expensive if you start with pewter, yeah. so, which is why I start my, my students yeah. on aluminium, yes. just to see, you know, is it something you'll take forward and then invest in pewter and all the it, fancy tools. <laughs> exactly. Do you, you want to see if you love it? You've got to fall in love with it. Yeah, them. exactly. Where can you learn more about metal embossing art or pewter art in New Zealand? and find sort of introduction to metal embossing tutorials and bits and pieces. Cool, so you can learn from me. <laughs> so I started the Metal Embossing Academy in Tauranga in 2018. So I teach physical classes where I have um, around six to eight students in a class. I also travel throughout New Zealand to teach classes. I do have a lot of online classes. The, the best value is basically to join our Love Metal Membership Club. So for a year, it costs you $150 or $15 per month. So if you pay the once up fee, you, you basically save two months membership fee. But that gives you access to a metal tape course, which is, it looks the same again, but it's made of tape. And then you use scrapbooking em embellishments to stick under. So it's foolproof. Anyone can do it. The kids love it. I've, I've done so many kids classes with it. And then the other one is my step-by-step comprehensive metal embossing made easy course so that teaches you how to do metal embossing on aluminium i show you how to do it on copper coated aluminium i teach the processes for um, for pewter how to apply color to the metal and then we've got ongoing tutorials um, inside the membership 
where we keep uploading new content and new videos from myself and then all the other tutors that are based all around the world. So, and you get access to our, our private Facebook group. It's fabulous. The, the people in there are absolutely awesome, creative, like you've never seen before. It's so inspiring and just really a lovely, a lovely community. So I think, you know, for the for less than three coffees, it's a, it's a fabulous investment to start learning a new craft. <laughs> Definitely. It sounds very, very valuable. And you're investing in yourself in a passion. Exactly. And start a new business from it. So. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And all you're limited by is your imagination. The fun thing about the metal is that you can stick it onto glass, wood, other metals. So you can basically stick it onto anything you want as long as you use contact glue because that's what sticks the metal to it. The surfaces to which you can apply it really are endless and mm. just the different applications you can cover it with resin mm. you can apply color to it so you can use alcohol inks look mm. amazing on the metal you can do glass paint you can even use just normal sharpies you're blowing my mind my endless. mind's going crazy <laughs> right possibilities. now because I, love... I love it so much yeah i love pat as you know i love patterning things yeah i'm like what could i make if you're interested in metal art definitely do check that out like you said as little as about three coffees um, you yeah, exactly. An, an amazing form of art. And so, hang out with the most amazing people from all around the world. We've got people from Canada, Namibia, the US, Venezuela, the UK. There's just so many countries being wow. represented. It's so fun. That's it's so really, it's just, it's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Such a creative hub. Is there a quote or words of inspiration that you would like to leave us all with? So the one thing, and that's basically been my journey for the last year since I, I took my business online. It's been, a, been constantly out of my comfort zone. It's all the things I've never been good at. I know squat about designing a website or all these tech things. I know nothing about social media. I know nothing about building websites and all these things or online interviews for that matter. But since I started it, you know, you just have to put yourself out there. And so the quote is basically, it's one of Eleanor Roosevelt's, to do something that scares you every day. And I can totally say, yes, I've done that. If not daily, then at least twice a week. <laughs> so that's the one thing. And what's, what's beautiful about it, it, it actually becomes a bit addictive because you're constantly growing. It's just this massive learning curve, which I find really invigorating and I love every moment of it. It's overwhelming at some times when you think, oh my goodness, I don't know how to do this, but there's always someone who knows. So do something that really scares you and you might find something really beautiful at the end of that journey. And I do love to try and do something that scares me every day too, yeah. because goodness is outside of your comfort zone. And I know that all too well. The scariest thing I ever probably did was I literally patted a cobra in India. You did? And I was oh, awesome. Terrified. Good on you. <laughs> but after doing that, what was funny about it, it felt warm and soft yeah. and probably a metaphor too. It wasn't what I thought it would feel like. It was actually out soft and warm <laughs> so, wow yeah. so it's incredible yeah it was, i remember I, once it's it's funny i remember once we were at a some sort of a lifestyle show mm -hmm. in south africa and they had these spin of snakes and you could pet the snakes and mine was just a corn snake so nothing scary as a cobra <laughs> and it, they're quite thin but i remember i was holding the snake and it was sort of going through my fingers and i was like ah, freaking out because it's a snake yeah the next thing I know, this little guy climbs up on into my sleeve and he just keeps going and I'm like, oh my word, this is too much for me. Eventually he wrapped himself, he went all the way in and he wrapped himself around my waist. But what you say is, it's actually, it's warm and it's... Yeah. It's the weirdest sensation because it's it's something you don't want to happen, but it's actually not that bad. Oh, <laughs> but it just links them perfectly. With I the wouldn't climate. want to. Read. So how yeah. you're in public place and you've got a snake in your and oh, you're, you're climbing. Well, it was very close, so I just took everything off in public, but yeah, luckily yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I, would have been, I would have been like, <laughs> yeah, my gosh. So uh, oh. comment below what is the scariest thing that you've ever done. And have you ever had a snake <laughs> encounter serious <laughs> than that? If you haven't, you should. <laughs> I highly recommend it. <laughs> so it's been a pleasure having you on the channel today, Nanette. And thank you so much for taking the time and sharing all this valuable information with everybody about metal embossing art and for those interested in 
how to do metal embossing art to how to get involved, really. It was my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's always so much fun talking to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload.